Hey guitar champion, what's going on? Justin Hombach here, back from my practice cave. Welcome to the first episode of Beginning Shredders. In this series, I'm going to take you on the great journey of shred guitar and speed solo on guitar. This is especially for all those guitar players who want to take a deeper look and a sneak peek into the shred guitar playing. And here I'm going to make videos about basic technique, basic scale knowledge, basic fretboard, visualization and basic stuff that brings you on the next level of shred guitar play. But let me tell you one thing first before we start. There are a lot of opinions on the internet, on the World Wide Web. And maybe some people would take a different view on some stuff, on certain techniques and certain topics than I do, and I do a bit of different stuff than other people do. I highly want to encourage everybody to check out more videos, not only from me about some topics, also from other guitar players. There's a lot of great content out there on the world of internet. And if you, if you have any questions, if you're stuck anywhere, feel free to write it in the comment or to connect with me on Facebook, on Instagram, everywhere. I'm always willing to help you out with your problems and to give you some feedbacks and some tips and some tricks. This is why I'm doing those videos, to bring you guys to another level. So feel free to write in the comment or connect with me on Facebook and Instagram. This month's topic will be sweet picking. We are going to check out some basic techniques, some basic fingerings, and a few etudes that I'm going to show you how you can improve your sweet picking and get into sweet picking. There is kind of a mystery going on about sweet picking. I know when I was around 12, 13, 14 years old, people are actually telling me back in the day, you aren't a real pro if you don't know how to sweep. So this was the thing that I believed back in the day. And I clearly remember when I saw some guitar player on the stage somewhere, real pros, really great guitar players. I go to them and ask them, Hey you, do you know how to sweep? Hmm? If they answered no, there aren't the real pros for me. But sweep picking isn't that hard. And it's not that big mystery that some people are talking about. And I'm going to show you the basic technique in this video. So stay tuned. As I've said, if you have any questions, write me in the comment, connect with me on Facebook. And without further ado, let's start with this lesson about the basic technique of sweep picking. So, today we're going to take a look at the basic technique. And the basic technique of sweep picking is, of course, a right hand technique. And we're going to take a look at some faults and some mistakes that a lot of people are doing. And a lot of people are stopping them from progressing in sweep picking. So, the first really important thing about sweep picking is the rest stroke. Rest stroke means that when you, we have plucked the string, we are laying on the next string underneath or uh, above. It depends on which direction we're going to sweep. We are really resting on the next string, so we don't move our pick up in the air. We are going from one string to another string, we are sweeping, so we are resting on the next string. This is a mistake that a lot of people are doing because when they are playing some sweep fast, they are doing it without thinking about it. But when they want to learn some sweep on the slower tempo or want to work on them on the slower tempo, they start to move the pick up above the string. So they're doing this. instead of this. So always try to check that you're doing the rest stroke in both directions, down and up. Now the next thing that a lot of people are asking me about is the hand movement and there are a lot of sweep beginners out there that are doing some big hand movements. They're playing sweeps like this. Um, but this is really inefficient. We have a hand movement, but the hand movement is really not that big. It's really short and small. So it's more like this. When I move down, I have something that is called the downward pick slanting. Pick slanting is a term that Troy Grady, an American guitar player, uh, has created. And I highly recommend everybody to check out Cracking the code on YouTube. It's, it's, a, it's a really, it's a really helpful video guitar series. What pick slanting means is the way how we hold our pick. If we are holding it like this, that the 
tip of the pig, also, that the tip of the pig is showing in the upper direction and the slant of the pig is going down, we have downward pig slanting. We can see this, something like this, yes. And if we are changing it to the opposite direction, so, so the tip of the pig uh, looks down, is going to the down direction, and the slant of the pig is going to the up direction, so it's upward pig slanting. Again, downward pig slanting, upward pig slanting. Normally we are tend to play downward pig slanting. This is the way how many guitar players are doing it without thinking it. Some people are used to be more the upward pig slanting, some more the downward pig slanting, it's totally fine, but it's really important to be aware of that there are two kind of techniques how we hold our pick. So when we are playing down, I highly recommend everybody downward pick slanting. Um, so we have more control about the rest stroke that our pick is landing on the next string. And for the opposite direction, when we're going up the string, I highly recommend everybody upward pick slanting. Because there's easier to land on the next string. Now, the change between downward and upward pick slanting don't have to be really, really big. As I've said, no big movements, it's a bit smaller. As you can see, my hand is barely moving. It's moving a little bit. I don't, um, I'm not really stiff. I don't do something like this. Yeah. So I don't don't make a movement. I make a movement, but it's not a really big movement. It's a bit more smaller movement. There's a big of thump movement in my kind of playing. As you can see, when I'm going downward, my thump is kind of flat. And when I'm going a little bit upward, my thump is going like this. So as you might have noticed, sometimes I don't have the uh, rest stroke. This is because sometimes I have a pull off or a hammer on in our left hand. And there I make a normal pick. But every time when I sweep, I have the rest stroke. Another big thing is the change between the up direction and the down direction. And um, for this we guitar player used to make some pull-off to make it a little bit more easier. More about this in the next lesson, but I still highly recommend to everybody to practice this change from the upward to the downward pick direction. So take, for example, these strings and just play up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 down, down, down. So it's E, B, G string and then G, B, E string. Try to stay always in time. What guitar players often tend to play, or me also in the back in the day often tend to do, is something like this. I'm no over exaggerating right now a little bit, but the thing is, when we're going to the point when we have to make the pick direction change, we try, or we often felt, we often fell a little bit out of time, especially on the high E string, because we are moving our hands too low. Try to find the point on every tempo where your pick direction change is still in time and not one change is a little bit more longer than the other change. What I mean by this is try to focus on a steady time and not on something like this. Try to stay in consistent time for this example in triplets. One, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, two, two, three. Always try to be relaxed in your right hand and try to go with your palm because the palm is the thing that mutes the upper strings. When we're going from the 
higher string uh, from the lower string to the higher string. For example, when I'm going from the G string to the E string, my palm rests on the G string, so this string is muted. For example, when I play something like this, this note is muted due to my rest string uh, resting on the, the, the palm on the string. When I wouldn't do the palm muting, the notes would be overlapping. And I would sweep with sound something like this. Not so cool, not so fluent, not so clean. Better would be something like this. For the left hand, we're going to take a deeper look into the left hand next video, but here's one thing that I want to give you on the way for this video. And this is train your roll technique with every finger. Because we have a lot of kind of this arpeggios and this fingerings and the sweeping kind of style. This comes from the situation that we have the same fret but split it on across the strings. For example, on this arpeggio we have the fifth fret on the E, the B and the G string. So it's really important to train your roll technique, not only with the index, with the middle finger, with the uh, ring finger and even with the pinky. There are some players out there who like to play the sweeps like this. So they have many fingers in one fret. Jason Richardson, for example, is doing this. But I think, especially when we want to speed it up, it's a little bit inefficient for most of the players. And in my opinion, this way is for the general guitar player, most of the guitar players, a little bit easier. Maybe for you not, maybe for you the... More finger technique is better than the roll technique, but I, but I still want to encourage everybody to train the roll technique. There are a lot of other musical situations where this technique can be really helpful. So, but more about the left hand in the next video. Let's summarize the things we have learned today, especially for the right hand. Rest stroke on each pick direction. Try to stay in time, don't make too big movements here on the right hand, something like this. Small movements, sometimes your thumb can help a little bit. And for the left hand, try to train your roll technique. Okay, so much for this video. I hope you like this lesson. I hope I'm going to see you in the next video and coming next week where we're going to check out the left hand and some cool arpeggios for the left hand, some sweep arpeggios. All right, let's stay progress and have fun practicing. Cheers.